Hey, I'm Aaron from Mito. I'm going to walk you through an example of how to use Mito in conjunction with some machine learning packages to do an uh, interesting analysis. So let's jump into it. This is the notebook that we're going to create together. So we're going to use Mito to kind of look at the initial data set. Uh, we're going to be looking at an Airbnb data set, and we're going to try to predict the prices based off some of the information that we have about each home. We're then going to do some cleaning of the data in Mito, and then we're going to kind of ultimately prepare the data set to go into the machine learning kind of pipeline. So we're going to do some of that in Pandas. We're then going to kind of validate the transformations that we've made in Mito again and uh, do a little bit more cleaning. And then finally, we'll put the data and the models to the test and see how we did. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Like always, the first thing I do is uh, import a Mito sheet and then uh, import my data so I can kind of start to get a sense of what the data looks like. So we have quite a large number of rows, 17 columns, and let's go through and kind of figure out which columns we're going to want to use, which ones we have to clean up, and which ones we want to just get rid of. So I'm going to start to do that. I don't think we're going to want the name. We'll just delete that. And the host ID is kind of the same thing. And if don't want the host name. Okay, great. So now I've cleaned up this data set. I've removed a few columns and just so I can continue using this in uh, you know, the rest of my analysis, I'm gonna run this code. And now I have this new altered data frame in, in my notebook like that. The next step that we're going to want to do is actually kind of transform some of these string columns into numeric values. Uh, the data set, the you know, uh, algorithm that we're going to use to actually do our machine learning requires that we do all of this on, on indicators. So I'm going to start to write some code to do that. Now that we've converted all of our categorical variables to numeric variables, I'm just going to validate that it all worked correctly by looking at the data again in the Mito sheet. Cool, so here we can see the neighborhood group. Uh, these are the NAND values that we filled in. Then or we can see them here. The neighborhood is filled in with values instead of the strings and all of our columns look like they are numeric. So the last thing I wanna do before doing the machine learning part of this is just to make sure that we don't have any, any columns that have uh, a huge amount of NAND values because that's gonna throw, uh, throw off our algorithm. So let's just go in and validate that by looking at the summary stats for each column. Okay, so the reviews per month column looks like it has 48,000 NAND values, missing values. If we look at the values tab, we can see, I think if we scroll down to the bottom, we have a lot of unique values, but 21% of them are missing. So let's create a new column again and use our fill NAN formula. And let's just assume that if they're missing, um, a value in the reviews per month column, then they have zero reviews. And let's call this reviews per month cleaned. Now I'm just gonna make sure that the other columns look good. Cool, so I think our data is ready to go. Uh, we're gonna now get some of the boilerplate code from scikit-learn and put our data through the ringer. So we found this tutorial code on creating a linear regression using scikit-learn uh, on Medium from the people over at Becoming Human AI. So let's just copy this code and let's paste it into 
our analysis here. And cool. So how this code is going to work is it's training a linear regression model and it's breaking up our data set into three different splits of that data. And then it's going to train the data, uh, use the training data to fit the model. And then we're going to test the data using this testing data set. And we're going to do that three times. And each time we're going to get a score of how well our model performed. And then we're going to print that score out uh, when we're done. And we can assess the accuracy of the model and figure out how we want to improve it going forward. So. For this first model, we're just going to look at, let's say, the reviews per month and see if that is a good predictor. And we're going to try to predict the price. And I think with that, everything is ready to go. Let's just make sure these are named correctly and let's give it a run. Okay, so as we can see, these are the R squared values of the three tests that we ran. They are quite quite atrocious. So, so far we've only used the reviews per month cleaned variable that we created. Let's try just throwing in the rest of our, the variables that we've set up, all of the ones that we have in this Mito sheet here and see how that performs. <laughs> Okay, cool. So we've added all of our fields to the X variable here, which we're going to use as uh, to make our predictions. But since these uh, values are all uh, quite different, we can see here some of them are you know in the range of a couple hundred. A lot of them are in the you know low single digits. Uh, we want to just standardize these variables to make sure that our algorithm treats them all kind of kind of equally. So we can get some more code to do that. Um, I'm going to hop over to the website again to pull that code and I'll be back in a sec. Okay, so we're back. Again, we have all of our variables set and we've added in these couple lines here to actually standardize the training features. Um, so what we're doing is we're using the pre-processing package that we imported from sklearn here. And we are going to use a standard scaler to actually, you know, scale these scale these um, values to be more in the range of zero or so negative one to one. So we're going to do that for our training data. We're then going to fit the model again. We're then going to do the same thing for our testing data, and then again we're going to score our results. And fingers crossed, this will be better than the previous ones. Well, they are better, 0.027 compared to 0 0.006. It's quite a big jump, but unfortunately, these are still quite horrible results. That's all we have to go over this week. Unfortunately, the model didn't turn out to be as great a predictor as we would have liked. So if you have ideas about how we can improve the model, leave a comment.